Okay, let's have a look at the different types or different groups of polymers. And we differentiate these groups of polymers based on their physical properties, which are determined by the intermolecular forces or intermolecular at, um, attraction between the polymer chains. Now we have three groups of polymers. We have our thermoplastics, our thermosets, and our fibres. And all three of them have different physical properties and therefore can be used for different purposes. Our first group of uh, polymers are what we call our thermoplastics. And in general, these are formed through the process of addition polymerization. So we have an example on here where I have our monomer unit being a chloroethene unit. And if we polymerize that into my example here, which is a trimer, we form the molecule polyvinyl chloride. Now this is a single chain. If we put multiple chains together, we get the diagram that I've got below, which is a loose web type structure made up of multiple chains. Now you'll notice that I have very little interaction between those chains. There's very little intermolecular force of attraction or action between those molecules. Therefore, we say that the intermolecular forces are weak. And because those interactions are weak, we expect this type of polymer to have a low melting point and low tensile strength. And what we find with this type of molecule is that as we heat it up, we can change the shape of that molecule, hence the term thermoplastic. We can also notice that with this type of molecule, at room temperature, because we've got that weak intermolecular force process happening, that we can actually deform the, pro the, the polymers or the polymer quite easily. So we find that this type of polymer is very flexible and we can bend it back on itself. It doesn't have much rigidity though. So we say here the, at the room temperature, the polymer can be distorted. In other words, the chains can slide over each other very easily. We can break bonds and reform bonds that are van der Waals forces quite easily. Now what we find with this type of molecule is that we can strengthen it. And we strengthen it, we can do it in two ways. First of all, we can add what's called a cross-linking agent, some other sort of chemical, that promotes more interaction between the polymer chains, therefore increasing the intermolecular forces and making it more difficult to break those chains apart. And what this will leave us with is a more rigid polymer rather than something that slides easily. We can also do this process by melting the complete polymer. And what this does is bring those chains closer together so that we increase the number of um, van der Waals forces between the chains. And because we do that, we in increase the intermolecular forces in the process, makes it harder to break, and therefore the object will have a higher melting point and higher tensile strength. Our second type of polymer is what we call a thermoset polymer. And just as we did for the first diagram, we can draw a representation of this type of polymer. Now it's important to note that thermosets have a much higher degree of interaction between the polymer strands through cross links. And quite often we find that that cross linking could be hydrogen bonding could be dipole-dipole bonding. But the important distinction between thermoplastics and thermosets is that we've got much more interaction between the polymer chains. Now commercially, many thermosets have um, or are available in a non-cross-linked form. So an example could be our fiberglass resin or our superglue where upon contact with either air or heat, they form the cross-linking structure. So we store them in the non-cross-linked structure. Once we expose them to heat or air, they form that cross-linked structure, which gives us some time for the molecule to set. Because once it's set, unlike the thermoplastics, it's very difficult to change the shape of that object. 
And a great example is our you know, fiberglass or melamine. Once it's set, it's set. And the only way that we can pull it apart is to break it apart. So those crosslinks change the um, physical properties of our thermoset plastic. And what we find is that we've got an increased melting point. We have an increased rigidity of the polymer. We have an increased tensile strength. So if we expose these to a flame, unlike our thermoplastics, which tends to melt at a low temperature, our thermosets tend to char. In other words, they give off um, or they slowly degrade or slowly decompose or combust with our oxygen and give off a, blacker, a black smoke. So they don't melt, they char instead. Our third type of polymer is a fibre. Now fibres are thermoplastic molecules, so they have very few intermolecular forces occurring between polymer molecules, but they can be manufactured in such a way that they can have the strands line up in the same axes. And because we get those strands lining up in the same axes, we can have more inter intermolecular forces based on uh, van der Waals forces, so the melting point will increase. However, we don't have any cross links, so we don't have any groups off to the side of these polymers that will interact to give us hydrogen bonding. So the, the molecular forces are still quite weak, but they are not as weak as our thermoplastics. So what we find in terms of our physical properties of our fibres is that we can stretch them um, and they will come back to their same shape. We can, we can stretch and um, reform the same shape molecules. We can also spin these into long fibres. They're not strong fibres, but we can still do that nevertheless. Now if we contrast this with a condensation fibre, so in other words, um, a fibre that's been made out of um, a condensation process, so it gives out a little bit of water. In other words, we can use polyesters or polyamides. We can form a much stronger fibre. So in this case, because with our polyester or polyamide, because we can form hydrogen bonds, we'll have a higher melting point and we'll have a higher tensile strength. So we get the interaction between the fibres. They're also a lot more rigid because of those cross-linking bonds as well. So overall our fibres give us the properties of being light and durable. Generally they're um, UV resistant and they're also generally water resistant as well.